In this Blender quick tip today, we're going to be discussing particle animation delay. Essentially, we'll be creating this effect. Now, just looking at that straight up, you may be wondering, okay, so you have a particle system with some objects um, and those particles are moving and the objects have some animation done to them. Cool. Um, it's actually a lot more going on than that. Uh, what basically I've done here is gotten around Blender's particle problem. One of the main problems with Blender's particle system is that Blender's particles do not inherit animations properly. Meaning if I'm animating a piece of popcorn and I want the popcorn to be shot out of a popcorn machine, if I instantiate those particles into my popcorn emission uh, object, and have those particles popping out of my object, or sorry, my emitter, then if there's an animation applied to the instantiated object, so the popcorn kernel, uh, if I've animated the popcorn kernel to pop into a piece of pop popcorn, <coughs> um, if there's an animation applied, by default, Blender does not start that animation when the particle is born. It runs the animation across the entire software and as such, if a particle is born on frame 89 and your popcorn, excuse me, is your popcorn animation takes, you know, 100 frames. Um, when that particle is born, the animation it inherits, the current state of that born particle will be whatever the animation state is at frame 89. So at that point, it's almost popped. It makes absolutely no sense for you to be popping a piece of popcorn and when it shoots out of the, uh, or when the particle spawns, I should say, uh, for it to be almost popped. It should be sitting there and then pop like it normally would in a popcorn bag. So the solution to this problem, the solution to getting around uh, particles not inheriting animations properly is to use animation nodes. Animation nodes gives us access to particle data. It gives us access to uh, some very powerful animation tools to allow us to instantiate objects based upon particles and then have them inherit animations and delay those animations uh, based upon certain parameters. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop open a new scene and get started with you guys. So I've set up a simple object. I'm calling this a swarm sort of spaceship. It kind of resembles like a Stargate from like Mass Effect or just like a spaceship sort of thing, I don't know. I just modeled it real quick for the purpose of this uh, demonstration and tutorial. Um, but it has a shape key applied to it and the shape key does this. So it starts with these wings closed and then over a hundred frames, the wings open up. So I'll play that back one more time and just orbit. So that is what our object, our main object is doing over the course of a hundred frames. So once you create your object, you give it some sort of animation, whether that's a shape key, that's we're going to be, what we're going to be using in uh, animation nodes today. Uh, we're going to be working with shape keys. And once you've set up your scene, uh, the next thing to do, if you are trying to instantiate this object, so let's say this is a piece of popcorn or it's a spaceship, like an X-Wing fighter in Star Wars, and you know they're launching out of, uh, they're really in the Star Wars movies, they're just kind of coming out of nowhere. Um, I guess I don't need a dock in like a big ship. Um, but they're flying into space and they're all going into attack formation and you want to, uh, have them delay each part of, or sorry, each spaceship to start its attack formation transition at a different time. Um, and so let's say those particles are coming out of a big spaceship or those, uh, X-wing fighters are coming out of a big spaceship. It doesn't make any sense for all of them to just come straight out of the spaceship with their, uh, X-Wings all popped open. So I'm gonna be talking a lot in analogies uh, in this tutorial because it makes it a little bit easier to understand. So popcorn, spaceships, etc. Regardless, um, first thing we're gonna do once we have our object, we have a shape key or an animation applied to it, is just add a simple plane, rotate that plane on the X-axis by 90 degrees, and then rotate on the Z-axis by another 90 degrees. And we're gonna move this uh, back about nine, 10 spaces and scale it up around 10 times. Press control A 
to apply the scale animation. Now from here, we just need to add a particle system. So we're gonna go over to the particle settings, hit new. I want this animation to take place over say 150 frames. Uh, so I'm gonna set my end time to 150. I'm going to set uh, the last emission time. So it's gonna start, all my particles are gonna be emitted at frame one and they're gonna stop being emitted at uh, let's say frame 100. From there, I also want all the particles to last uh, throughout most of the animation. So I'm gonna set the lifetime to 100 as well. And you could give them a random lifetime, but for the purpose of the tutorial, it'll be a little bit easier for working with like whole round numbers, no randomness applied, that sort of thing. Um, I will apply random emission, but that's about it. So as you'll see, they're falling straight down. We don't, we don't want that. So to get rid of this, we're gonna take field weights and turn gravity off. We're doing a spaceship here, so in space there's no gravity. So I guess this works. Uh, so let's play back through. Now you'll see they are moving across the x-axis uh, based upon the normal of this plane here. And I thought my normals were messed up, but they're not. So from here, uh, I wanna change the size to 0 0.180 to make it a little bit bigger. And then change the emission uh, geometry normal value up to 10. So this would be 10 meters per second. So you should shoot out a lot faster now. Yay, going smooth. From there, I'll change the number of emitted particles to 25. We don't necessarily need a huge amount of spaceships here. Um, just a few will do, and it'll also make our uh, simulation run a little bit faster. So we're gonna start there. And I believe that is all of the settings we need to mess with in the uh, particle settings. So now we have our, our mission set up and we have our object. Typically, normal use case, what you would do is you would click your emission uh, your, or your emitter and you would go down here to render and select object if you wanted to instantiate this object into your particle system. So you select the object, grab this little eyedropper and say, I wanna instantiate swarm ship. So now all of my uh, particles will become these little swarm ship thingies. Uh, it's not really working correctly and that's okay. It's, it's not meant to, <laughs> honestly. So we're gonna kind of bypass this. Uh, as you can already tell, I don't know why it's emitting like this. It, it shouldn't be doing this. Like this is something that Blender Particles has, has an issue with. Like why is my particle, why is my instantiated object turned this way? Why isn't it just automatically turned the same way as my actual object? Whatever, so problems there. To fix this, we're going to go over to um, animation and work with animation nodes. So this is my custom uh, custom file. I have a dope sheet, uh, which just gives me a list of the keys that I have uh, for each object. So I've got a key here for the shape key and then a graph editor. Uh, I'm probably not gonna use either one, so I'll just make them a little bit smaller because I've already done the animation editing. Uh, and then from here, we're going to come down here where you normally have your materials, your textures, uh, and compositing nodes. We're gonna scroll over to animation nodes. I'm assuming you guys have all downloaded this. If you haven't, uh, there'll be a link in the description to go grab it. Um, so definitely do that if you're trying to follow along and make this for yourself. So I'm gonna hit new, and that's going to generate a new node tree. And I'm gonna call this node tree Particle animation delay. Can't type today. All right. So upon loading, there's typically nothing there. Um, if you press T to open up the panel, you'll see all these lovely little options over here. We're not really gonna be messing with these at all. Uh, don't need to for this scene. Over here on the right, when we add nodes, there'll be a bunch of settings over here that we'll access and kind of make some changes to. Um, but it's all very simple and relatively straightforward. So the biggest thing when working with animation nodes is, and I'm gonna go ahead and uninstantiate this object here. The biggest thing when working with animation nodes is 
you you really want you really 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 want to know what you're going to do beforehand so while it's great to get in there and play around it's great to get in there and you know mess with all the nodes see what you can do that sort of thing um, animation nodes works really 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 well if you kind of have an idea of the effect you're trying to create at the get-go it's also great for experimentation i just prefer to kind of experiment play around like i normally do and then drop into procedurally generated animations afterwards um, that's just my personal style do as you please um, but in this case we need to know a couple of things first off we need to know that we're going to be instantiating this object so we have one copy of this object here our particle system has 25 particles so that means we want to create 25 instances of this main object here and I'm gonna move this down to layer 2 or layer 10 whatever that is so we have we need to instantiate 25 of these uh, swarm ships beyond that we also know that we're going to need to get the particle system that is applied to this emitter so we're going to need the particles uh, sorry the particle system and then we're going to have to actually get the particles within that particle system and then we're going to have to get specific information for those particles in this case since we want to a instantiate our swarm ship into the particle system we want the locations of each particle within that system secondly because we want to mimic the size of those particles like before i set my size in physics down here to 0.18 we don't want them all to be this huge so we're going to want the size information of our particles lastly we're also going to want the birth time and the die time of each particle so when a particle is born it's born on a specific frame that is considered the birth time when a particle dies it dies on a specific frame and that's considered the die time we're going to be using some math and some boolean operations later to delay our animation and also hide our objects so they don't spawn or they're not visible until the particle system spawns them so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab an object input node and I'm going to go ahead and basically grab everything that we need in terms of initial data input before we get going. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab the object instancer. Uh, I'm not setting any, putting any settings here yet, just kind of grabbing everything. I'm going to grab particle systems input node. I'm going to grab the get particles node. We're also going to want a particle list info node and lastly we're going to want a basic object input node from here let's go ahead and set up our objects and set up the particle systems we want so we're going to want the swarm ship so we're going to add swarm ship in as object input from there we're going to plug object the output of this object input node into our object instancer now we want to copy from the source object. We want to copy the whole object. So that means copy modifiers, copy any constraints that we have, et cetera. And then we also want to do a deep copy. So that what that means is that each object that is copied is independent of the source object. So for what we're trying to do here, we want each copy to be independent. Um, if you're trying to do something more basic, something that'll be a little bit faster uh, on your computer, uh, allow you to run through the simulation a little bit faster or the animation I should say is to not check this deep copy option but we need that for this case we also want 25 instances so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in from here uh, we also want to rename this plane to something useful instead of plane it's gonna rename it emitter and to get the particle systems so we're gonna take our particle system input node and select the emitter for that take our active which is whatever active particle system we have on the emission uh, or sorry on the emitter object plug that into get particles get particles gets every single particle that is in that active particle system we want that we're going to plug that into particle list info from there we also want to turn on some options so if you hover over particle list info or if you click on it 
If you come over here and open up your in properties panel, you'll see that there are some other, there are some other options here. Uh, options that you didn't know were there or you may have forgotten were there, uh, but that you're going to want. So we're gonna wanna turn on sizes. We're gonna wanna turn on birth times and we're gonna wanna turn on die times. Um, I believe that is exactly what I want. Uh, I had velocities turned on before, but I don't necessarily need it. We don't really need it for this case, but you can use the velocities to um, say speed up or slow down your animation, uh, the speed at which your particles animate themselves, that sort of thing. We don't really need to mess with that for now. So let's just get this all nice and neat here. And then for this last object input, we're gonna use a swarm ship. So sweet, we have our data and now we want to input that data into a subprogram to do some work on it. So there are multiple subprograms within animation nodes. The first of which is a group, which kind of functions as a normal group does uh, in other node editors. The second one is a loop and that's what we're gonna wanna use. So we're gonna pull out a loop input. You're also going to want to go to subprograms and click the invoke subprogram and click on your my loop uh, sub subprogram that you uh, just created. So that'll basically you send all of this data straight into this invoke subprogram node. And then this input node here starts the subprogram and every all the data you fed into it um, essentially runs through this loop. So we want iterators and we're gonna want one parameter. So an iterator is essentially, the way the loop works, an iterator says, we're going to for every object in a list. And so animation nodes works in lists. So you can create a list of objects, integers, floats, vectors, etc. So if I created a list of floats, and I said this was, I wanted a list of you know 10 floats, then there would be 10 floats within this little node socket here, um, all with whatever value I give them. And you can see this if you use a debug node. I'll plug that up right here. And you can see an array of all those values within my new list. So since objects here is a list, all of these are lists. Um, for every object, for all 25 objects that we're instancing, we want this loop to do something. So in this case, we need an iterator for an object. So we're gonna use an object list as an input. So you wanna plug your object instancer straight into this invoke subprogram um, output here. And we're gonna name this, li uh, this loop set instance location underscore scale. So this is gonna set both the location and the scale of the instances we're gonna be using. From here, we want a new iterator and we're gonna use a vector. So we're gonna use a vector list here. We're gonna call this locations and plug our list of locations straight into that. From here, we also want a, we want three float lists. So I'm gonna make all of those real fast and name them accordingly. So the first one will be size. The second one will be birth time. And the last one will be death times. Perfect. We also want a parameter. And a parameter just basically takes an outside value and plugs it straight in. It doesn't evaluate it per every, it doesn't iterate through it as if there were multiple versions of it. I, I think that's the best way to uh, to describe this <laughs> um, animation nodes can get can get complicated sometimes so we're going to add a new parameter in call it just a regular object and then plug our object into the top we also want to make sure we plug in sizes birth times and death times now from here there are a few different things we can do we have this data we have it into the sub program and now we want to start you know messing with it so the first thing we're gonna do is add a vector from value node. This is going to take our sizes and create a vector for it because when you scale an object, 
and I'll pull this up for you real quick. When you decide to uh, scale an object and you're looking at a vector, a vector is made up of three values, x, y, and z. These are the values that make up your normal maps, that sort of thing. Um, so we have our sizes here, which are single float values. So it just has one value. But this is being applied to our particles on the x, y, and z value, or x, y, and z axes. So we want to bring that in and make sure we create a vector for it. Um, you could use this using the vector from value node or the combined vector node. If I plug these three up here and then add two debug nodes, as you'll see, these should be the exact same thing. So two ways to do same thing. Always good to know different methods. Um, so now we have a vector from value node. We have a vector. And then we're going to want a vector math node. And we're going to be comparing our initial object size. So I'm going to pull out a transforms input node. That's going to take our object, this object right here, and it's going to look at the location, rotation, and scale of that object. So we're going to take vector from value, which is our sizes, and our initial transforms, so our initial scale, and plug both of those right into our vector math node. We're going to multiply this together. What this does is it says, OK, we have an object that is this long. Um, it has a specific scale across the x-axis. So if I press in here, you'll see that it's scaled at 10 across the x, or sorry, 4.5 across the x, 1 across the y, and uh, 1 across the z. So if you don't include those values and you try to transform your object or set the size of your object based on a particle set based on a particle size, what'll end up happening is your object gets all like squished and looking weird. We just don't want that. Uh, so this is a very easy fix for that. Um, now the next thing you're going to want to do is add in an object transforms output node. Here you're going to turn on location and you're going to turn on scale. Our vector math node here, which is the output of our uh, our, re, our multiplied uh, particle size versus initial scale value, is going to go into the scale output. Our particle locations are going to go into the location output. And then we want this to happen for every object. So that's going to go into the object transforms output. And now you'll see my objects have moved all over the place. Pretty cray. I'll play through the animation. Now they're spawning and doing, doing somewhat strange things. So we haven't uh, done anything with visibility yet. We haven't really changed any of that. And it actually looks like these are parented to something. And I don't know what they would be parented to. Let's find out. Hold on a moment. Sometimes uh, things happen. And I'm wondering what they're getting parented to. I guess they're getting parented to the uh, animation nodes container. That would make sense. If I, I can't select it and zoom in. I wish I could. Um, it's turned off for a reason, I think. It's not selectable. Yeah. So they're parented to this uh, this container here. It's fine. All righty. So that takes care of the uh, instantiation of our objects and putting them into the right locations. Now, currently, if I get rid of this crap here, you'll see that um, A, some of them have already spawned. So if I flip back to this beginning part here, this one has already spawned for some reason. This is the last particle, but it's already spawned out here. We, we don't want this. Um, so you'll see once I get towards the end here, it randomly jumps from, or at least it was randomly jumping. Strange. Animation nodes does strange things sometimes. 
anyway, it's in the right location now. This is fine. Um, but currently, these are <laughs> they're they're all visible, and we want to get rid of that. And also, their animations all start at the same time. So if I look at this shape key here, and I'll flip back to the properties window. If I look at my shape key, you'll see the shape key for this object is 0.492. It's also the same for this object, and it's also the same for our main object. We want the shape key, um, which is being evaluated, it's already been animated, we want the shape key to start its animation when the particle is born. And so that's what we're gonna do next. Um, the last thing we need to do is create some output nodes. Um, and so those output nodes are going to be our object instances. So we need an object list. And we're gonna plug our object, our final object transforms into that. And then we're also going to need a, our birth times. I'm typing in things I don't need, the float list. And we're also gonna need another float list. So two float lists, yay. And so we're gonna plug our birth time for each particle and our death time for each particle right into that. What's very nice about this loop is that I'm starting with an object and saying for each object, give me each particle's location. And so essentially it's setting up a particle object pair since I have 25 objects and 25 particles. So every object is essentially matched with a particle location, a particle size, a particle birth time, and a particle die time. So it makes it really easy if I start this way to make sure that the data I'm outputting at the end is the exact same um, and it's consistent. That's, that sort of thing is extremely important. Um, the last thing that we're gonna wanna do is send all of this to another sub-program. So we have one loop, now we need a second. So we're gonna grab a new loop here and we're going to call this shape key delay underscore visibility. And we're going to invoke this sub program up here at the top. We're going to want our list of instances. And I'm going to rename uh, this to instances. Is that what I wanted? No, that's not what I wanted, but hold on object um, I want this to be not object list I want it to be something else there's a there's a way to rename it over here I think um, or something I forget I forget where it is uh, oh here it is so click your object list output and click advanced settings and you're gonna want to rename this to instances yay and now it should be instances up here Perfect, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll say this first one is birth times, and the second one is die times. Sweet. Now, um, we want to input our instances as an iterator. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna want object list, and then we're also gonna want birth times. I keep typing the name of the thing which is not actually the name of the node thing I want to put in. So let's just rename all these, keep things consistent. Perfect. And we're also going to want one other parameter. That parameter is going to be a float value. And it just so happens that this is going to be the frame number. So, Let's add a time info node that's underneath animation, time info. And we just want the frame, we're gonna pipe that straight in there. The rest of this can go straight in, just like so. Alrighty, perfect. So now things will start to get a little bit more uh, complicated. I mean, things have been slightly complicated so far. I hope I'm doing a good job um, of explaining this. <laughs> if I'm not, I really apologize. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. So from here, we're, the first thing we're going to do is work with shape key. Let's just get that out of the way. So I'm going to press control A 
and type in shape key. And I want shape key from object. Because we're running a loop again, we are getting into the shape key for every single object within this list of instances here. So 25 different objects. Next, we want to get a list element. So we're gonna hit get list element. And because the shape keys from object generates all of the shape keys for that object into a list, we wanna get whatever shape key um, is going to actually be useful for what we're doing. So plug this in here. Now the basis shape key is gonna be index zero. So if I plug a debug node in here, um, it disappeared on me. If I plug a debug node, you'll see that it should say BPY struct shape key basis. If I turn this up to index one, key one. So we want key one. So we want to get index one. And that'll be the same thing for every single uh, instance object we're going to use. From there, we want a shape key output node. We're going to plug our element, which is the shape key, into that output. And then we're going to do something with this value here in a moment. Make sure if you're using this um, on your shape key, you want to turn on slider min and slider max. And you want to turn on these buttons here because these buttons tell um, animation nodes that you want to evaluate these options. So slider max is going to be one, slider min zero, and then value will get an animated value here momentarily. All righty. The next thing we want to do is delay our animation based upon birth time. Very, very simple. All we need to do is grab a delay node. We're going to plug our frame into the time. And then we're going to plug our birth times in the, into the delay. So um, if I plug a debug node up here, plug in time, this should be giving it to me for the, or should be giving me the data for the last particle. But if I press Alt A, you should see here that when this particle spawns, um, I don't know which particle this is for sure, but without this delay node in here, you'll see the current frame is 86. If I plug this birth time straight in, you'll see the current frame is, or it's moved to 96. That is the frame upon which this particle is born. So if I plug in delay time again, the final delay time, um, which is delaying it by 10 frames currently and plug in birth times, you should see that this should go down to negative 0.04. Don't ask me why, that's weird. Um, regardless, there's maybe some other values in there I'm missing. Regardless, one thing I've noticed in animation nodes, I just kind of go with it. <laughs> like Until I figure out you know, kind of what I'm trying to do or what's going on, I just kind of go with it. it. Jacques is kind of a genius, the guy that uh, developed this. So some of it ends up being over my head, but this worked. And so now I'm showing it to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the next thing we're gonna want is an animate float node. So this is gonna be just an animate number node. Grab that and plug your time into the time socket. Now you set your duration to however long you want the duration of this animation to be. I say 100 frames because that's the initial uh, duration of my um, shape keyed object. Uh, you also want the end value to end up being one. So the value starts at zero, it ends at one. It basically animates the same exact way that you do with a keyframe. If you keyframed on frame zero and then you keyframed on frame one and, or sorry, keyframed on frame one and then keyframed on frame 100 and increase the value to, um, you animate that value a certain way. It does the same exact thing as keyframe animation. So we're gonna take this and plug it into our shape key output node. And we're gonna take the result and plug it into the value. So if I'm on frame one, as you'll see now, if I click this one, this one spawned like kind of like first. So it's shape key is at 0.32 and I'm on frame 33, so that's nice. If I click this one, you'll see its shape key is at 0.162. So now we have essentially completed the task of instantiating our animation and delaying that animation 
on the basis of particle birth time. Um, to add icing onto the cake, as you can see, you can see all of these particles even though none of them are born yet. On frame one, there should only be one particle born, but I can see all of these. I don't, I don't want that, right? So we need to do some foolery with uh, Booleans, and this, this should get fun and confusing. So we want to compare Boolean. Um, we're going to want two of these. And the first one is going to be A is less than B, and the second one is going to be A is greater than B. We want a third compare node to be A or B. Uh, it's not a compare, I'm sorry, it's a logic node. So we want this to be A or B. And then the last thing we're going to want is an object, we're gonna want two more things, I'm sorry. Object visibility input, we're gonna have that over there. And then object visibility output. Huh. All right, almost there. So we want to take, and I'm just gonna go ahead and mute these, not mute, but uh, hide them, make them small, scale them in a little bit, because they're in the way. Um, first thing we're gonna wanna do is take our objects, all of our instances, and plug them into visibility, because we want to affect their visibility. Second thing on this visibility node is to also go ahead and turn on the uh, hide values um, to make sure they're going to be calculated by animation nodes. So, in our logic situation here, um, this is going to be condition A, and this is going to be condition B. Condition A says that if A is less than B, then the result should be true. If A is greater than B, then the result should be true. So, what we're going to be doing is saying that if the birth time, specifically, if the birth time is, or sorry, I'm gonna start with frame. If the frame is less than the birth time, then we want this condition to be true. If the frame is greater than the die time, we want this condition to be true. Our logic operator says, if either A or B are true, output true. We take our logic operator and we plug that into hide. And then hide render. And last thing to do is plug our instances in. I forgot to do that, sorry. Um, and also plug this into object visibility input. I forget why I had to do this, but it worked. Um, so maybe I don't need to, but I'm just gonna continue to do it for now. So what essentially just happened <laughs> is now all my objects are hidden because I said, and I told Blender to say that if for some reason I'm on a frame and the particle that I'm currently evaluating, the, car the particle that I'm currently instancing, this spaceship, if it hasn't been born yet, output true. If for some reason I'm also on a frame that this particle or this spaceship or this object that I'm instancing is dead, output true. If either A or B, if either of those conditions are true, also output true. If I output true, then the object is hidden. And that's how you hide your objects. So currently, it's true. And then eventually it should be getting to false when we get towards, yeah. So this particle spawned on frame 96, uh, or on 97, I should say. Because here, at frame 96, the uh, logic is saying that um, the birth time is, let me check it again, birth time is uh, greater than the frame and the die time is less than the frame. So that's what's happening on frame 96. 
the particle should now be visible. And you'll see, if you look at these, this particle here has a shape key value of 0.05-ish, and this particle way out here that's been alive for a long time has a frame value of 0 0.960. So, in conclusion, <laughs> um, I'm sorry this took so long, and I'm sorry that was a whole jumbled mess of uh, words and like logic operators and things you're probably, if you haven't been using animation nodes, you're probably relatively unfamiliar with. Um, but if you've been searching for the answer as to what, as to how you can solve the problem of your particles uh, or instancing objects and they don't receive animations properly, this is the best answer I can give you. I've tried everything else, nothing else seems to work. Blender's particle code is basically spaghetti code. It's all over the place. It needs some work. Hopefully Lucas Tun said he's gonna be working on it. If you can, please, I'll be willing to donate some of the proceeds from the One Lux Material Pipeline to get him to work on particle nodes, um, or sorry, work on the particle code and particle nodes, all that stuff. I mean, whatever it takes, because this, this right here, is intense <laughs> I, this is just uh, it's too much for something that should be so simple but hey at least we got a solution now so thank you guys for tuning in like i said sorry for the ramble um but have a blessed day and make sure you uh subscribe to our channel